Hi everyone, I'm Lady T506. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 4, Episode 16. We starting off with Kirk and Rashida. Now he's trying to get on her good side. Did y'all know Kirk has been he's been Kirk, let's just put it like that. He's like, I've been spending up all our money, making Rashida crazy with Ashley. And Ashley didn't want to give me for real for her, but she got a girlfriend. I've been stressing Rashida out, and I want her to do what she want to do. So, to shut her tail up, let me get her this story. So, he wanted to blindfold folks. He got Rashida all in the car, blindfolded and whatnot. And she like, kind of kinky mess you got going on. He comes to the store like, this is your store. It's all fixed up for you. Here you go. Are you happy? It was like he was doing this, like, not more of a... The way he was talking in his confessional, it wasn't like a... I'm doing this because I love you. It was like, I'm doing this because I know I didn't mess up and I want you to shut up about it. Am I the only, only one that got that? How is it that Scrappy didn't know Mama D was getting married? These are the things I want to know. He was like, you know, I did, you know, say, you, know, you got my blessing. Like, I didn't know they was going to get married. I thought that just meant they was in love with each other. That's all that they was going to do. But you know, it's like, I would like your blessing. It's usually, you know, they're trying to get married. But, you know, Scrappy, he started the thing. We just spinning and say, you know, you know what I think my sister is, right? I think Mama D up something. Don't know what it is as of yet. The fact that she want Erica there, yeah, she up to something. I'm trying to figure out how is the family didn't tell, you know, Scrappy that Mama D was getting married. How is it that he didn't know? Has it been, like, this long where he ain't seen his mama and seen the ring on her finger? Like, this is some things like this ain't adding up to me. And then he even more mad that Eric is going to post me in the wedding party. Like, he like, man, man, this going to mess up the whole us and this child support and all this. All that's just going to get flushed down the tool. And I was like, you would think he would want Erica and Mama D to, you know, be cordial with each other. Less stress on him. Less stress for his daughter. All that. But I guess not. Kalina, she goes to therapy for her postpartum depression, and she is diagnosed with postpartum depression. And she's like, she don't like feeling like this. She don't like with all this, you know, all this um, with these young black men, middle-aged black men, old black men getting killed. She's like, she don't want to be one of them women to see her child out there getting hurt on the street. She's like, she want to do her music, but like she's depressed. These hormones got her all out of whack, and she's like, I want to do this so. When it's time for my boys to go to college, they will have the money to go. I'm doing this not only for me, but I'm doing this for my boys. And, like, right now, she, really, she can't really get that because, like, she's so depressed. And, like, the postpartum depression is a serious thing. And I'm glad that, you know, they're putting it out there. Like, women, you ain't got to feel ashamed or anything like that. This is not your problem. This is your body, you know, doing this to you. Hormones and all that stuff. This is causing it. You should not feel any less of, as a woman because it is. And she was like, you know, in a lot of the black communities, you know, they don't want you going to therapy. They want you to pray. But, you know, some, prayer, I'm not, prayer is wonderful. But sometimes you need to go to therapy to get all of this in control. So while Scrappy is confronting the Bambi about her being, you know, Mama D getting married and how come she didn't tell him. She's like, you know what? Because it's too much drama. I didn't tell you that your baby mama going to be there either. Because you know what? It's drama. Mama D comes in all dramatic like always. And she's like, I ain't seen you in a while, son. And he's like, what is this about you getting married? She's like, yeah, me and Earth's getting married. She's like, you gave us your blessing. And he's like, you know what, Mama D? If Erica going to be there, I'm not going to be there. Mm -mm, just ain't going to happen. I know you good stuff. I got my side eye on you. He's like, yeah, I know you deserve love, but Erica don't need to be there to witness it. Like, what you doing? And she was like, oh, really? Oh, so you're not going to be at my wedding? It's like, nope. If Erica, there, I ain't going to be there. I ain't even going to be on the parking lot. I ain't even going to be in the same street. Matter of fact, I ain't even going to be in the same zip code. Same state, none of that. I ain't even going to be on the same side of the country. I'm going to be up out of here if Erica going to be at that wedding. I was like, is it really that deep? that Erica's in the wedding that you ain't even going to be there to support your mama. I'm like, really? Is that your hatred towards Erica that much that you can't look past that and be there for your mama? Really? Jessica, she is confused as to why she has not been able to work with Stevie J. And I thought that, you know, it was clear. This is my thinking. That you just, this man that you're trying to work with 
you just got into a fight with his wife not too long ago. So did you think, you know, he was just going to be like, yeah, you got into a fight with my wife, but I'm still going to work with you? Like, that should have been proof right there. As soon as, like, the first swing was made, that should have been proof right there. Like, okay, I'm not going to be able to work with Stevie no more. And your attitude is what's causing me not to be able to get with these producers because you like to fight and cut up several fools. This is the reason why producers don't want to work with you. You got to work with the junior producer, but if you keep on acting like the, the acting the way you are, you're not gonna be working with anybody. I guess Don, once you are no more useful to her, she is going to throw you to the side. So you may need to get your anger and check. You know, go see somebody about the anger and get yourself together. People ain't gonna want to work, want to work with you. So the fellas decide to go fishing. And they trying to, you know, give some words of wisdom, scrap it like, boy, go ahead and walk your mama down the aisle. You only got one mama. Go ahead and do that for her. You know you love your mama and your mama love you. Go ahead and do that. And as far as Erica, that's the mother of your child. Go ahead and let that girl be at the wedding. It is not going to hurt you, boo. It is not what I ain't say, boo, but I'm saying, boo, it ain't going to hurt you to let Erica be at that wedding. You ain't got to sit next to her. Y'all ain't got a dog on talk. Just be there and support your mama. And I'm, I'm I, this is where we gonna have a we gonna have a talk. This is for all men and women. Quit talking about the um, your child's other parents, whether it be in front of them, on tape, on TV, or what have you, because you won't have to, you know, explain to this child why you disrespecting the other parent. I, that's one thing I can't stand. He ever calling Eric all kinds of devils. And what you gonna say to your daughter when she sees this? And we're like, Daddy, why do you hate my mommy? And then you will have to explain to this child why you calling this person, calling them her mama devils. Because she gonna be looking at you all kind of wrong, y'all. People quit, quit doing that. I don't care what you and this other person got going on with y'all. Quit downing the other parents in front of the child. Just stop doing it. Quit saying how your daddy ain't no good. That's why I did that and third. Quit doing that. Your mom ain't no good. Did that and third. Quit doing all that. Let the child decide for themselves. Now, if the now if that other parent is out there smoking crack and doing all kind of crazy mess, and you know, then you know, well, daddy can't do that. Can't daddy can't be around because of this. But you know, quit. You know, I'm I'm gonna scrap it to quit doing that. You know, quit calling Eric all kind of devils because you gonna have to. You know, face your child and tell them why you was acting like that, being disrespectful. So Stevie confronts Jocelyn about working with producers that he knows. Last time she said, "I'm working with some producers, ain't got nothing to do with you, Stevie. These are some other producers. It's like just gonna be working with somebody I know." And I just don't want to see the stress and the drama that's between them two mess up with Stevie's sobriety because it's like now that he had a rehab. Stevie, he still be cutting up a little food, but he ain't like he used to. He ain't drunk and belligerent. You know, he tried to, he did do that tomorrow, but it was like he was defending the mother of his child, trying to get back at her. But like, I just, I don't want to see his sobriety messed up because he's having this drama with Jocelyn. I don't want to see if she's going through sobriety messed up because what they going through. Because Stevie, he's trying to get back to the old 1990 Stevie. And I don't want him to have a setback because they always arguing and fussing and fighting. So I'm gonna need these two to get together. So Mama D and Erica, they sit down and have a talk and Mama D lets her know Scrappy don't really want you to be anywhere and he said he ain't gonna come and Erica's like, you know what? If Scrappy has a problem with me being in your wedding, I just won't be in your wedding. I'll sit in the audience and I'll be a spectator. I just won't be a part of your royal theme of wedding. I, I just won't do it. And I was like, okay, Erica, you taking a somewhat higher road and like, I don't want to start no drama. This is your day, Mama D. I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to sit my tail down in the audience and I'm going to walk you come down the aisle like the queen that you think you are. And we're just going to do that. So y'all, I about fell over when Carly Red wasn't being messy. I was like, oh my goodness. What is going on in the world? So, just as she goes to see Carly, and she's like, yeah, Mimi ain't been doing what she's supposed to be doing to me. She's been 
doing for me and she been talking behind my back but I got stuff for her me and Margo gonna do a song together and Carla's like man you need to tell Mimi about this but she's like no it's gonna be a surprise like when she get there I'll be like hey this my girl Margo we finna to do a song together and bam it's gonna be all in Mimi's face I'm like okay this is getting back at Mimi you working with Margo and this is Margo getting back at Mimi for working with Jessica. Like, I'm so tired of Margo. I am I am sick and tired of Margo. I just need her to sit down somewhere. Like, you are mad at the wrong person. You need to be mad at your husband because he was the one with, with Mimi. So, it is the night of Jessica's performance. And they show Mimi and Arian in the VIP section. And I was like... What kind of VIP section was this? It was just like a rope, just like right in front of them. I like easily somebody could. There were no guards, somebody keeping them out of this couch in the VIP section. It was just like it was in the midst of the club, and they just put a couch there in a rope. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, really, this is what we're doing? Like, somebody could have just been like, okay, I'm going to walk around <laughs> the rope and just sit down. So yes, if she gets on stage. This going to be my mic. Hey, everybody. Thank you for coming out. And first of all, was that a see-through top she had on? Um, stop it, girl. Stop it. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for coming out for my performance. And there's a special surprise. My girl, Margo. And Margo comes out on the stage. And me was like, look at this dog on Mohawk wanna be wearing half on there. But Margo, you know what I mean? She keeps it cool. Me, what I'm thinking is... Jessica, this could have backfired very badly on you. Because it could have been if this had been for real, for real life. And these wasn't people that they just grab up off the street. It could have been a very important, well, you know, somebody who knew somebody there like, dang, we need to sign Margo. She got a good voice. I don't know about that, Jessica. Uh, just the dime piece. I'm about to call it just the fox. Yeah. Yeah, Margo, we need to sound you like they could have come and like, hey Margo, you sound really good. I am the A and R of such and such records and you need to come sound with me. Um, we don't really want to work with you because you don't really sound all that good. But Margo, you have the thing, girl. Come just come hit me up. See, it could have went like that. This is how my mind works. You know, I'm very special. I'm like, yeah, this could have this is the way things could happen while you over here trying to get back at Mimi. I go on a girl you done brought on stage. That's like one thing you don't do. You a new artist. Don't be bringing people on stage with you because that's taken away from your singing. And it's putting focus on somebody else as well. So I'm going to need you to stop doing those things. Yeah. So that was the gist of everything that happens. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment in the, or a video response. And like I always, I thank my subscribers. And the people who watch my video. I want you to like this, like this video, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.